Um, I'm just going to refer you to the photo here for a moment. And I think probably in this, I purposely chose this aspect because it's not very often we deal with this situation. And that is a view of looking up at a gradient like this, with, with, you know, the, the, the road in front of us goes uphill. Um, so there's a, an upward gradient. I'm going to put a, a figure in here. Now then, what I want you to do is imagine, okay, this figure that we've got walking, draw a line where their feet will touch the ground, okay? Follow it, a little journey up here, over to here. Their feet would probably be in the middle of the road if they stick into the middle of the road. And so their feet about would be about there. That, that means similar scale to this, not, not, not a million miles away from each other. That tells us this, the scale of this person, the height of this person on this little road, be something like that, okay? So the head height is obviously higher than this one because they've walked up another uh, gradient. So there we are. I hope that um, it's a lesson in itself there, folks, in, in you know, quite a number of things, mostly perspective. Uh, I hope that helps. Um, the other one final thing I just remembered, uh, there's a little gap here. I'm not worried about that. We'll just put some paint in there. Um, sorry, yeah. Um, what I want to do with this painting, I really like the bright sunshine. So I'm actually going to softly, very softly. This is a, I think this is a 3B pencil. Um, very softly, I actually draw my shadows in okay because it goes across the road and up there something like that because there's some dynamics in that in that shape of these of these shadows but what catches my eye is the gap between these two shadows that's going to offer real interest okay that's going to really um so i'm starting off with a mop brush and i just want to get something into the sky uh, pick up a bit of ultramarine blue up here. And straight in, lots of paint, lots of water. And straight away, uh, I say straight away, in two seconds or so, I'm going to pick up some warm. And that warm is just a little bit of raw sienna. And that goes into the lower part of the sky. As long as you don't push this raw sienna around too much into the blue, you shouldn't get too much green, okay? Should just offer, it will go slightly green. It's bound to, it's blue and yellow that you're, you're, you're pulling together. But ostensibly it is um, just warming, warming up because even a, a warm green um, gives that sense of, of, of warmer color up there. I could still play around with this guy if we wanted to suggest something more akin to the photo. You know, there is cloud up there, um, but before you can lift the cloud out, there's no point in lifting cloud out of an already very pale sky. You'd have to go a little bit darker. Okay, so I'm picking up the uh, ultramarine blue again, but this time with less water in, because that will allow me to paint the some of those dark patches, those blue sky patches up there, like this. And uh, it's still very warm in my studio this morning, so there is quite a rapid dry, um, drying um, period, uh, speed. So anything that I can do now, what I'm doing here is I've just cleaned the brush uh, and I've uh, taken most of the water out of the brush. And so it's a thirsty brush, and that allow me that will allow me to uh, shape and manipulate my um, cloud areas, my blue sky areas. I think that's that's probably where I want it. Something like something like that. Okay. Um, now, probably I should really just scratch through. I just picked up. I'll show you what I'm doing here. Just picked up that blue again okay but look what i do I, I just run my thumb and forefinger over the brush to take some of that blue out because what i want to do is just a 
is just a, a, um, a, a dry, light dry brush weak uh, blue here because the, the road is going to go be, become warmer than this with, with, uh, with the next few washes and things. But it's nice just to have a suggestion of uh, reflected um, sky because it's a hard surface. Um, on bright days, um, you often get a lot of the um, sky sort of color uh, reflected in hard surfaces, tarmac surfaces, stone surfaces, even on fields. I've seen um, seen uh, fields, farmers' fields before they've been um, cut. You know, the grasses have been cut, the hay's been cut. When it's lush and green and it's a really bright day, it can reflect the sky. It's, it's, it's amazing. Uh, okay, so I've put a bit of cool in, in the road areas, but I want to go warm again now. So I'm going back to um, some washes. And this is raw sienna this time again. I'll go quite, quite strong over both the roof. I will stay out of the chimney, okay? So I like these abstract shapes on the um, chimney. Now this is what I meant about you don't need a corner line on your on your buildings. What you can do is just paint the clean edge that that, that shows a division between the gable end and the front elevation of the house, like this. Okay. Now I'm going to just slide through the lower part of that chimney with a bit of that raw sienna back up here, painting around the chimney still. If later we feel as though the chimney needs warming up, we can. But there's, there is a noticeable difference between this front elevation on the chimney and the illuminated side of the chimney there. I've actually gone over a bit there. So I'm going to just scrape that back a little bit, get my uh, paler color back. OK, so. Now, there'll even be some warmth in this side. So I'll probably, not right now, I'll probably put an even weaker wash of this raw sienna um, in this front edge. And there's definitely some warmth in this front wall. But what I'm going to ask you to do on the front wall is leave a little slither of light along its top edge there. OK, paint through the, the, the figure's legs for a moment. It's just an abstract delivery of, of paint there on the wall just for the moment. Um, 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 then going to do the same on this building. I mean, the roofs have got to go a lot darker yet. So paint this warm color through the roofs. For the moment, stay out of this illuminated side of the building on the right. There's some shadowy areas between the two buildings, which we can uh, put in with this warm, thin wash. And uh, of course, you, you can get plenty of dry brush yellow in here in, because this is this is all foliage and stone. Um, so I'm going to put in a, a stronger, loose delivery of raw sienna. I'm going to um, put in a little bit of cadmium red. Just picking up a little bit of cadmium red here. That can go into areas up here, probably in the upper areas because. That red suggests sunlight at a closer proximity to us. So down the front of the wall, all I'm doing is looking at, at the photo and getting ideas. I'm not copying the photo exactly, but I am taking ideas from the photo. And I thought I can see, and I think I can see a sort of red in these upper areas of, the, of all this greenery. Um, we'll get some more greens, natural greens in there in a moment. But, for the, but as I say, all I'm concerning myself with at the moment is the, is the lovely, warm, sunny sort of effects. Now, as I did with the pale blue, I'm just running my finger and um, thumb through, the, through that brush. And I'm going to do as I did with this blue that went over the road surface just now. Just going to scrape down this lovely, sunny type of um, delivery over the over the road here. Now the colours should cool off big time as we go up the street. Um, one, because it's getting further away from us, of course, and two, um, uh, it, there's a lot of shadow up there. Just, just remixing some of the shadow that I want foot down here. 
So if you remember, it's raw sienna, a little bit of cadmium red. Then I, I take some of it out on my finger like that and then drop it on your painting. I wouldn't normally do that over my painting, but I'm doing it so you can see it. Um, I just run my thumb and finger over, over it and that takes some of the paint out and gives me the, the, just the right amount of sort of delivery that I'm looking for. Feel as though there's, interestingly, there's, there's a bit of intensity to that red around here, around mid ground here, which is good, which is about right, about where I want to see it. Um, here's something I don't often get a chance to show you folks in these, in, in these weeklies um, because of time issues, but I'm gonna show you a trick, um, that's a trick, it's a horrible word, um, a, a trick, a technique, whatever you want to call it. This is still wet, okay? Now then, I'm going to show you some how to get um, plants, foliage in here. I've got to, I can't hang about, I've got to do this quickly. Um, it's by using cauliflowers, deliberately using cauliflowers. I'm picking up some Viridian green. I've put a little bit of cadmium yellow in it, just a bit. Very wet and watery. This is still very damp, not wet, damp. Um, if you drop, go a little bit more yellow, actually, it's a look, looking at too artificial, but you drop these little, make contact just by touching down in places. And as I say, what will happen is these develop into natural looking cauliflowers, okay? And they'll make the best looking little clumps of whatever, um, you know, sort of uh, low lying, small uh, plants. You'd never be able to paint them um, by any, uh, as convincingly by any other method, you know, certainly wouldn't be able to do it like I used to do it years ago. I'd have a point of the brush like this and I'd be dotting away for hours. And I, uh, you know, you, you just, there's always a shortcut and it's usually the shortcut when you find it is the one that works. Okay. As long as you get your timing right, it's all about timing. I can play around in there for ages, creating clumps of saxifrage or whatever it is you want to imagine that you're, you're creating in, in here. Um, Huchira, uh, all sorts. <laughs> They're all those sort of things you can imagine will turn up in, um, hang on, in these sort of scenes in these places. A bit more greenery at the back there. Probably need, I'll just go and put a little bit of blue in this green mix that I've been using. I'm doing something a bit different now, okay? I'm actually um, dry brushing the shape of a shrub up here. But that technique is really good. And, and what I'm going to do on top of it now, I just clean the paint out of this little, little point of brush. And you can then drop a little bit of water into them as well. Okay, though that too will make its own cauliflower. Um, that don't do too much, otherwise you'll you'll flood it out so much, you lose any shape that you you'd created. So you know, play with that. It's a great um, technique to get to, to develop. Now I've just shown you how to do it. Um, there, there, there are ways now of, of manipulating that even further. Um, so, but um, I just wanted to show you that, that like a introductory sort of uh, way of tackling that type of thing. Um, I've got paint and washes on just, just about everywhere, apart from the right hand side over here. Now I'm going to start it off as warm, even though I'll be putting blue into here any second. Started off as warm, just a complete block out, vertical block out there of uh, raw sienna. Um, and then, as I say, I want to make it look a lot cooler. There's evidence of white here, but it's in shadow, of course. Okay. So if I put this ultramarine blue over that warm color, They'll get, you'll have a sense of this being a white wall. And I'll let that do its thing. I can't do much with this at the moment, okay? Um, all I can do is, as I've just done, is, is just 
blast it with a with a with a, a really fairly weak wash. Um, any further details, we'll have to wait until that's sort of dried off a bit. Could just lift a little bit of light out, maybe. Yeah, just lift a little bit of light out there. Um, okay. So I haven't put anything in this wall. Now that's because if I were to put anything in this wall, all that lovely organic stuff that I created is going to be lost. So I'm going to speed dry this now, I think, so that I can get on with putting something in the wall. So I hope that makes sense. It, it, I want to put something in the wall, but this is still damp. So I want some definition to the wall. I'm not going to get definition by working wet into wet. So I've got to dry it. Okay. Okay, good, good. Um, so I'm gonna go to a scruffy brush. This is my really cheap, nasty, well, I love it actually. It's just a really cheap old school brush. Um, you can still get them online from, they're, they're usually in bargain basement things. Um, so it is natural fiber um, of some sort. Uh, anyway, um, I'm going to use this for scrubbing in my wall. So it'll be a bit textual. Okay, uh, if I pick up that, I've got this little puddle of, of raw sienna, but if you look at exactly what I'm doing here, okay, I'm not taking the really wet puddle there i'm taking an area right at the top of it because that means that what's going into the brush isn't terribly wet okay i'm only loading that brush with exactly the amount of paint that i want if i put, took it out of there the whole thing would go into the brush and it would be too wet so i want to just stick to something that's far more textual and i'll keep doing this until that paint is just right in the brush I, I may end up taking most of that puddle, but in a way that I'm in control of, I, I, because it's so easy to take up too much and uh, suddenly realize that what was in the brush was far too wet. There we are, that's better. I'm gonna do the same now with, um, I think we'll take a little bit of blue. So I'm always conscious of the, the, the condition of the brush. You know, just by squeezing it between thumb and forefinger, you'll know if there's too much water in the mix. Just a few, probably need a bit more uh, tonal uh, depth in, in that area before you can scrape things out and expect to see them. So in a moment, I'm going to come back to that and then put a wash on it. Um, just, I'll just make sure, absolutely sure I've got something that's a little darker. So I'm just mixing up a bit of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna here, just a bit darker to create a texture like this. As I say, I'll come back to it um, in a moment and I'll probably put a, a watery-ish sort of glaze over it just so that things look a bit more natural. Right, okay. I'm going to turn my attention for a moment to a little bit of detail. I'm putting this brush down, going back to that brush that I was using a moment ago. Uh, can't remember what I, what I was using it for. Um, da, 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 da. Anyway, oh yeah, delivering the, um, the greenery. So sticking with my usual mix for this, this is not quite dry brush. Well, it's not a heavy dry brush. There's quite a bit of water in this brush, as you can see. I wouldn't be able to move that bit of uh, ultramarine blue paint around if there wasn't water in it. I'm gonna add a bit of burnt sienna to that, create a bit of a neutral, a warm neutral. When I say warm neutral, that simply means I'm allowing the burnt sienna, the warm color to dominate. So there's, there's a little bit more of that in the mix than there is the, the cold blue. So it's a slightly warm neutral. And I'm just going to place out three and a little bit, that's my usual trick, is three and a little bit of those four window panes up here. 
don't underscale the window panes of okay. that degree of sensitivity. Um, because we, especially when you're using a lot of this, um, this type of detail in window panes and things, the more you put in, the more noticeable the color becomes overall. As I say, you, what I'm doing here is I'm picking up a bit of burnt sienna and adding it to that neutral mix, knowing that what's coming off the brush right now is a little bit warmer. Okay, right. Um, continuing with sort of line work, not, not as worried about these, um, these other windows. Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit of cadmium red in that roof for a minute. You might think, now what I'm doing here is I'm softening off. I'm softening off an edge, which is the furthest edge of this property, just as it sits in front of that little property at the top of the road. You, you really don't need, you really must not have hard lines there. It must be a soft transition from the far end of this building here to, the, uh, to how it appears in front of the little building at the top of the road. That must be a, almost a sort of... Um, it, it, it's just a sort of washed out area. So there's this darkish line on this corner. I wouldn't run it back too far for the same reason I, I softened a lot of that area off. Um, but yeah, there's a, a delineation, let's call it, uh, not required. But I can pop in what I think is a sort of the line edge of where the tumbling foliage comes down over the wall delineate that a little bit and you and it's amazing how much of this will start looking far more natural when we start putting um you know further washes on just dry my hand before that starts making a mess so there's that color that i want there's the volume the amount that i want now all i've got to do is make it look a little more natural and let's just put a tiny bit of burnt sienna in there Okay, now I've got this area and I've got that area there. I don't know whether this strength is right or not. I've been painting many years and you'll never know if you got it right the first time. Um, so what you do is you keep looking at it and say, well, it needs to be a bit bluer or a bit more red in it or a bit more burnt sienna in it. it needs to be a plummy type. The best way I can describe it, a sort of plummy type purple or warm purple. So let's try it. Let's see if this mix is, is good. Um, I put my brush down, okay? Just steady yourself. Um, set yourself up to uh, just to relax. But what I do in the other hand here is I have a bunch of um, tissue paper, which I, which I form into a, a ball. At least three sheets of this like that okay and that face there that flat face is my eraser if i don't like what i've put on it comes straight off okay the other thing i will do because when i'm applying shadows i like to uh, deliver a little bit of warmth into a shadow very similar to what i did on the roof of the house in other words imagine i've just made a pass over here of shadow okay um, I'll pick up this other brush and I'll just take up a little bit of uh, raw, uh, sorry, burnt sienna. You need to put that somewhere in a, a separate mixing area, perhaps like that. I mean, I do it on the fly, to be honest. I, I don't tend to have them ready like this, but it, it helps if you're not used to doing and working so fast. Um, just have them ready like that, a little area with the brush, with a bit of warmth um, and leave it somewhere where you can pick it up. So not for it to roll off like mine just did. Um, so let's have a trial hit over here. I've got a feeling this is a little strong, but um, we're gonna start on this building up here. Now, remember what I'm always saying about, if you can make another edge while you're painting one edge, I'm thinking about the edge of this uh, greenery here, which I'm leaving, um, uh, 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 so the, uh, I'm thinking about painting the building, yes, but I'm also thinking about the edge that I'm leaving that should look like what it's meant to look like. It's a, you know, a busy little area of, uh, busy-ish area of greenery in front. 
So maybe when that dries out, it won't be too strong. Um, let's let's leave it like that. Let's let's be bold and confident. Um, here's that bit of warmth, and I'll just tuck it down there in the corner. Just one hit, one hit. Let it do. If it's going to do something, it will do it. If it's not going to do something, it doesn't want to do it. Don't fret about it. Forget it. Um, so the little pocket there that will develop into cauliflower if I'm not careful. So, um, right, we know that there's a, an area back there that surely has got to be in shadow. There's got to be a shadow underneath that line there, maybe shadows off the dormers. Um, that's probably mostly shadow, that, that roof like that. Okay, so you've got an illuminated front side of the building. In fact, the more I see, the more I want to shadow that roof. Like that, okay. Um, so I think my shadow strength is, a, is okay. Uh, I'm gonna put the brush down a moment. I, I do actually paint usually a bit quicker than this. Uh, but uh, what I'm gonna do here is pull this shadow into this, softening some edges actually down here. You can lift out to lift by lifting out a little bit of shadow down in a, a distant area it gives a sense of depth thirsty brush i'm taking the paint off on this tissue uh, sorry um yeah this is also in shadow isn't it like this now i just want some more light in there and a bit maybe a bit more warmth i'm not sure yet but we'll just lift some light into the windows, across the wall in places. So what I was wanting to do there, and I, I think I've achieved it, I've, I've lost that edge, that defining edge, which, I, which is intentional. Um, let's go under here. The obvious places first, perhaps, that's the best. Uh, advice I can give you. There would be shadow under the uh, overhang there. There's going to be shadow across here off the chimney. That, I'm going to suggest that this roof is in a little bit more light than that one. So I'm not going to shadow the roof. We will shadow this because that must be throwing a shadow over that section of the roof back there. The chimney is throwing a shadow, sorry, over that over that roof. Um, the, the chimney, this side of the chimney that, that you can see here, that's going to receive something of a shadow, but not right now. Um, now I'm going to lighten this. It, it, it is in shadow, isn't it? It's bound to be. It's, um, it's, not, it's not in the light. Uh, the, the, the roof might be because it's higher up, but the building is in soft shadow. So I've just picked up a lot of water. This is a much weaker shadow mix. And if I, here's that opportunity to show off the uh, change, in, uh, change of angle. We'll just shadow that. Again, this is very arbitrary, folks. You, you, um, you just have to sort of sometimes do it and hope. Um, Notice I don't take my shadow right down to the ground because there's always something like ambient bounced light in these lower areas. Even if it's not obvious in the, um, in the photograph, I find it, uh, it works quite nicely. It's just to show off a bit of light. Here's my little delivery of warm paint over here. Now, now that I've done that, I'm rethinking the roof, okay? Um, there's one, there's a couple of things here. I want some warmth here. That will dry out a lot lighter. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure at the moment whether that roof should be in sunlight, but we'll, we'll leave it there for the moment. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to suggest that there's shadow across the lower part of this little stripey shadow. I think that will suffice. I'm just picking up a small brush here. As long as you don't take the shadow to the front edge, so the little hints of shadow that I'm showing on this side of the chimney are um, sort of cast shadow off objects. So 
a little too perfect that light spot up there so i'm just running a brush over it okay here comes the um probably the main shadow now i'm gonna go across the road up here there'll be a shadow on the wall from that figure wouldn't there so just uh, something like that that'll do over to his legs you must jo must join that shadow to the to the figure um i'll put the in, these the shadows for these other figures in in a moment and i just want to put a put some softer shadows in places this is very watery now this shadow And now here's the, the shadow I've been looking forward to. What we do over here on the wall, et cetera, we'll, we'll deal with in a moment and over here. But the one I think will make or break this, I don't want to put, I don't want to put pressure on you, but the one that's really sort of making this scene, I think, is, is here. Now this will all, I think most of this, or some of it at least should be in shadow, but I'll deal with that in a moment. There's the break in the uh, shadow. So the shadow picks up again about here somewhere. Remember where you think the lie of the road is, okay? How is that surface undulating? Sort of, I, I just keep it, if it's like mine, just keep it more close to horizontal. Talking about these lines here, the edge lines, the horizontal lines. And then down here, let's get that much quicker. I, I really, go into panic mode if I if I slow down. Um, I, I think in the early stages, you go into panic mode if you speed up. Um, you want to try and get yourself into that place where you go into panic mode if you slow down. Okay, now that probably isn't, that might not be strong enough, I'm not sure. Let's take that. Yeah, I think we've got to try and warm this up so i'm going to deliver some warmth into here just to drop that burnt sienna that i pre-mixed down here something like that now shadows are whatever's going on up in the sky in terms of clouds and things like that and cast there's a whopping great right hand vertical building here we would expect um shadow to be falling or maybe somewhere off the top of there don't lose if you've got lovely bits of warm sunlight in this left hand territory don't lose them stare instead um drop your shadows into areas where it, it's just a neutral color and you'll and you'll have that lovely contrast of warm sunshine and shadow okay now it's not there but i'm going to suggest that um there's a, i don't know there's a post coming out the top of the wall on the right hand side somewhere and it comes across the road up here something like that okay uh right so i'm just putting down slowing down now this is that stage in the painting where um you paint less and think more okay might have to speed dry this. I think I'm going to. Let me just move things out the way and I will speed dry this. So just telling you what I'm doing here. I'm looking to soften one or two of the edges of the uh, shadows and one or two sections of the edges of the shadows. Mostly it's hard of edge. Um, yeah, so what I'm looking at here now that wall needs some sort of suggestion of shadow something like that once i've delivered it i'll take a little bit off sometimes with the with the um with the brush like this so a bit of delivery and distribution if you like if you want to call it that um Okay, so it comes down to now, 
adding a, a few more dark low lights, really the real dark stuff, you know. Um, this is where, <clears throat> excuse me, this is where I would um, use my pickle jar lid to keep it um, devoid of water. So I'm just going over here to my uh, clean paint. There it goes. See, there's water in this paint that I'm picking up from. That's not good. There's water in the well, in that little well there, because I've been using a wet brush to pick up my paint. So I have to spread it out thinly for it to dry out like that. And then I take ultramarine blue, generally put it to one side rather than just mix it all together like some ugly, ugly mix. So there's a sense here that you've got a warm left hand side to your mix and a cold right hand side. OK, so that you can alternate picking them up. Um, yeah. So we I, I want to. Um, pop this area. Out. I think this is going to be my focal point territory here. So I'm going to go in with some extra little darks. Um, they may be at the edges of the wall down here like this, at the edges of, in places in the uh, dark greenery. Uh, maybe if you're really careful, a pair of sunglasses on that character. Um, the odd darker mark here. There will be a, a line through my road in a moment. Uh, this, this paint is too thick for that, I think. That would just be too heavy. Um, we'll just put, I mean, they, these are things you can't explain to anybody. They're just the placement of a, of a, of a mark that's going to show the lay of the land or whatever, you know, the, the fall of the ground. Um, nothing more really than that person's been out shopping, give them a bag, give them a, a, a strap over the shoulder, maybe. A um, little bit of darkness to the, uh, the point where the leg hides under the short there. Um, it's not there, but I, I just feel as though an old fashioned, um, uh, TV aerial or something like this would be good. So just weaken off this and warm it up a little bit. Over here, this time a bit more water. And I'm just going to run a, a few directional lines through the road here. I mean, it, it's a sort of... The, the reason why I think, you know, the, the, these can get a little bit tight is because um, it, it's the speed at which we paint. And I've got a lesson, uh, I think it's next month or the month after, and I'm going to paint. Um, and, and, and it's up to you whether you want to subscribe to this, folks. You could choose to, to, to join me or not. But but um. I'm going to show you uh, how I, the speed at which I normally paint, and and, and it's the reason why my uh, paintings uh, uh, stay loose looking. But to be honest, to get a lot of this stuff across, we have to paint at this speed. Otherwise, you just wouldn't be able to. I appreciate that you. It would be very difficult for you to follow and pick up on. But I do want to show you um, how I go about uh, retaining um, a very loose. Um, a style in, in my in my watercolor and it's all about the speed the, the comfortable speed at which you work and i said this many a time just because i paint quickly or other people paint quickly doesn't mean to say that you have to paint that quickly what i would say is this you should try painting much quicker because once developed you can always go back to a speed that's more comfortable for you but you go back to that speed with the knowledge of how important it is not to pontificate not to over fuss things you know so yeah i highly recommend you getting into the habit of painting quickly uh, and then worrying about or, or re you know um fine tuning that process as, as you see fit at the speed you you work uh right okay so a few um i can't really see them but i'm going to put them in because i know they work well and that is 
just uh, some evidence of uh, perhaps communication. And there are some here of this, of this post, but I'm also going to suggest that maybe they couple off over to our building over here. That goes across to building over here. There may be a telegraph post at the top end of the road. There is a lamp there just, just glimmering through at the edge. Um, but these sort of things can be very, uh, very useful. These lines, when they, they, they're sort of like random lines, but God, they really add, you know, they can really add things to your, to your, to your painting. A uh, little bit of white gouache, and I think we'll be done on this occasion. Um, do I put colour in the garments of our figures? I think I probably should. Um, maybe I'll just leave them mostly white. I'll just put a little bit of... Um, um, I, the, the names of colours elude me when I'm, my brain's thinking of painting. I just look for a colour and that's the one I want and that's the one I use. Um, this is Viridian Green and a little bit of Cadmium Yellow. And I'll just deliver a bit, just deliver a bit to the lower torso, okay? But with a clean brush, with a little bit of water in it, uh, land the brush on the shoulders and just tease down into that colour. That way, that that green won't look so garish that it uh, it looks artificial. And just tease around until other pigments join the, join the party a bit. So the green is diffused. Um, could we give this other character a nice rosy, coolish red garment, same treatment, delivery down here somewhere in the lower, lower, um, lower torso, um, and then clean the brush and uh, leave the shoulders light, if you can, leave, leave plenty of light on the shoulders of your characters, of your figures. It's probably a little bit too harsh that so I'll just take a bit of blue, drop a bit of uh, that bit of blue shadow that I had on the go into that lower part again. Oh, they haven't got shadows. The individual characters haven't got shadows. Let's just mix up that shadow mix. I've got plenty of it down here. Might just need to be a bit thicker, a bit stronger, heavier. Yeah, and let's give this. Remember the it must follow the lay of the land, this shadow that comes off the figure. And we'll have it join in the wall there. And this one, the shadow will go uphill, of course. Don't go putting a horizontal shadow behind this person because they're on a hill. Still don't like the brightness of that. So I'm just going to lose it again with this. Now a tiny bit of white and I think we're ready to ready to wrap it up. Just uh, so I take as usual my my white directly from from the tube. Start with a bit of spatter that always loosens me up, and makes me feel better. It's just uh, it's okay. It's just paint and water and paper. You can't get locked up for painting a bad painting. Yeah, sort of bit of spatter. Uh, you could just put a tiny bit of this on the heads of your characters, um, maybe over the top of the wall in places. Uh, even follow the line of the wire cable, if you, if you like, because parts of that will catch light. I think we're going to leave it at that, folks. Right, let's put, get everything out of the way and put the mount around it. As I say, apologies for going over a bit. Um, so there is the painting. And I think it's okay. You know, I reserve judgment, full judgment till perhaps tomorrow when I, when I'm, you know, I can take my mind off it, my eyes off it and reassess it. Um, but overall, that's okay. Let's see how you folks have been getting on.